Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to try a bit of an experiment with, with the Wanhao. So, um, you might remember back a video or so ago, I uh, did an unboxing of the FLIR camera. So, I have it set up over here. So, let's uh, actually pan a little bit and uh, let's kind of take a look. So, I've got this set up on a tripod in the back here. And what I do is I have it pointed at the hot end of the uh, the one how actually the nozzle I have it I have it set up and then if we pan back over here what I have set up is the Kodak camera and macro mode set up recording the um, LCD from the one how itself now what I want to do with this is actually monitor if you will the temperature of the uh, nozzle on the hot end as it fluctuates. Now, I have a little bit of a challenge here because the FLIR camera only reads to about 120 degrees Celsius. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Wanhao temperature at its minimum of 170 degrees Celsius. Now, the um, image, and you'll, you'll get to see this when I do the time lapse after this, uh, because of the area, it's going to be a little bit cooler than, uh, obviously, um, the 120. So it should read it. Uh, and again, what I'm looking for is not the actual temperature itself, but the fluctuations of the temperature, because what we should be able to see is the temperature fluctuation and be able to track that. And what I want to do is kind of compare the two. Now, I can't get empirical statistics out of the LCD, but we can kind of watch and see its fluctuations over time versus that of the FLIR. And then what I want to do is, after the time lapse, is go back into the FLIR application on the computer and take a look at the outputs from the FLIR camera. So, anyways, uh, what we're going to do is cut to a time lapse uh, of these, and I'm going to compare these two. And we'll take a look at it. Now, it's uh, what I did is for five minutes, I ran at 170 with the FLIR and videotaping this. Now, I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit through five minutes. So, it's going to be about 30 quick seconds of running through all the variations that has happened in that five minutes. And then we're going to jump back and then we're going to take a look at it inside the computer. So, let's go to the time lapse and then hop into the computer. But welcome back from that time lapse. Uh, one of the things I discovered after that time lapse is my idea was to pull this into uh, the FLIR tools up here, as you can see. And the thing I just discovered is this only works for photographs and not video. So what I had done is I had taken a video, as you just saw in the time lapse, and what I was hoping to do was be able to call this number from the string of uh, video frames. However, it does not appear you can do that. So, I guess a little bit of a lesson learned. It was an interesting experiment in being able to, again, watch this uh, video process through here and the match up the um, rough changes because, as you can see, we do have a uh, pretty close correlation in the movement of the the FLIR number versus the Wanhao number in the um, actual temperature fluctuation so there is quite a bit of fluctuation in this and uh, I think this is one of the problems and this is why I'm going to switch over to uh, a PID format I think in the temperature settings on the Wanhao I'm going to do that in a, another upcoming video I think we'll also try some other experiments in the calibration of this hot end because I think this is one of the pieces where I might be having some issues because I think the hot end or probably better put the nozzle is running a little bit colder than the actual heat block is so uh, I think that might be a problem so the heat block is where the ceramic uh, 
heating element goes into and then obviously the uh, nozzle screws into the bottom of that and this is what I'm thinking so th this is this is the nozzle down here which I'm taking the temperature it's almost dead set in the crosshairs of the flare camera and you can see the rest of the unit up here this is uh, you know you can see the cables here going down into the heat block and with the um, uh, uh, again, the ceramic element is, and there's good, also uh, appears to be fairly good heat transfer into the nozzle. However, I think there is a, a temperature delta between what the thermistor is reading in the heat block up here and what the nozzle is outputting. So I'm going to try some more experiments, and uh, you'll see that coming up in another video. So anyways, um, again, sorry about that. I was hoping to get a little bit more detailed report out of this, but... Uh, it does not work for video. So I think what I'm going to have to do in the future is try uh, snapping some successive burst uh, images and then import them into the report. So kind of watch for the future and we'll come back around to that. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this coming. See you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.